After deploying a machine learning model, the journey doesn't end there. The model's performance can decline over time due to data drift. Data drift occurs when the distribution of input features in the production environment deviates from the distribution seen during model training. To efficiently prevent model performance from the impact of data drift, we can build a fully automated data drift detection workflow. This workflow fetches reference data from Postgres database, gets the current production data from the web, detects data drift by comparing the reference data and the current data, and appends the current data to the existing Postgres database. If data drift is not detected, no further actions are required. If data drift is detected, the flow sends a Slack message to alert the data team, retrains the model, saves the model as a pickle file, and pushes the updated model to S3 for storage. This flow is set to run at specified intervals, such as 11 a.m. every Monday. Overall, the workflow includes two types of tasks, data science and data engineering tasks. Data science tasks are the pink boxes, including data drift detection and model training. Data engineering tasks are all the boxes, including tasks related to data movement and sending notifications. Let's start with creating some data science tasks. The first task is to create a Python script to detect data drift. The script has two CSV files as inputs. We will use Evidently, an open source ML observability platform to compare the reference data serving as a baseline with the current production data. If dataset drift is detected, the drift detected output will be true, otherwise it will be false. Next, we will create a Python script responsible for model training. This script takes the combined past and current data as input and saves the trained model as model.pickle. After finishing developing these two scripts, data scientists can push them to GitHub, allowing data engineers to use them in creating workflows. Now that we have finished creating data science tasks, let's choose the tools needed to build data engineering tasks. Popular orchestration libraries such as Airflow require modifications to the Python code to use their functionalities. When Python scripts are tightly integrated into the data workflows, the overall code base can become more complex and harder to maintain. Without independent Python script development, data engineers may need to modify the data science code to modify orchestration logic. On the other hand, Kestra allows you to develop your Python scripts independently and then seamlessly incorporate them into data workflows using YAML files. This way, data scientists can focus on developing their Python scripts while data engineers can focus on handling orchestration. Thus, we will use Kestra to design a more modular and efficient workflow. Plant this repo, which is linked in the description of this video, to get a Docker Compose file for Kestra. Next, run Docker Compose up and go to localhost 8080 to view the Kestra UI. Make sure to start the database server and insert your credentials into the environment file to set up the environment needed for this tutorial. Let's create a data drip detection flow. There are two tasks in this script. The first task is a Progressive code copy out task that exports a CSV file from a progress table. The second task executes a Python script that reads a CSV file from the current working directory to create a pandas data frame and prints the first 10 records of the data frame. Next, add the local file task to save the output of the get reference table as a CSV file so that it can be used by the Python script. To enable data passing between these two tasks, we will place them in the same working directory by enclosing them inside the working directory task. Click Save, then click New Execution to execute the flow. Click the Logs tab to view the logs of the flow execution. From the log, you can see the first 10 rows of the pandas data frame. Click Edit Flow to edit the flow. 
Let's replace the Python script task with a Python command to run the detect data drift script. We will also install dependencies from the requirements.txt file before running the command. To access the script, we will use the git clone task to clone the GitHub repository containing the code. Since the detect data drift script needs both the reference data and the current data, we will also include a Python script that fetches the current data from the web and saves it as a CSV file. To make the data URL start date and end date variables configurable during each execution, we will convert them into inputs with default values. Next, replace the hard-coded values with inputs.name. Click New Execution. We'll provide the option to change these input values. After executing this flow, click the apples tab to see all apples of this execution. We can see that the value of the drip detected output is true. Next, we'll use the progress SQL copy in task to append the current data to the current table in the progress database. Currently, the current file is saved in the working directory. To allow the progress SQL task to access this file outside of the working directory, we need to save it to Kestra's internal storage, which can be achieved using the local files task and the output field. The output of the save file in storage task cannot be used in the progress SQL copying task. After running this flow, the resulting data will be visible in the current table within your progress database. To run this flow on a specific schedule, add the schedule trigger to the triggers field. Here, we use a cron notation to tell Kestra to run the flow at 11 a.m. every Monday. Next, we will create a flow to send Slack messages. This flow includes the Slack execution task that sends Slack messages via a Slack webhook URL. The instruction to obtain the Slack webhook URL can be found in the description of this video. You can define the conditions under which the flow is activated using the trigger field. We will use the execution flow condition to trigger the flow when the detect data drift flow is executed. We will also add the variable condition to execute the flow when the drift detected output of the detect data drift task is true. After running the detect data drift flow, the send Slack message flow will run and send a message on Slack. Lastly, Let's create a flow to retrain the model, which is triggered from the same condition. This flow executes the following task. Exports a CSV file from the current table in the progress database. Create a local CSV file in the working directory. Clones the GitHub repository containing the model training code. Runs a Python script to train the model and generates a pickle file moves the pickle file outside of the working directory and upload the pickle file to S3. After running the detect data drift flow, the train model flow will be triggered. After this flow finishes executing, the model.pickle file will be uploaded to the bike sharing bucket. Besides data drift, the decline in model performance in production can also result from insufficient testing of new models prior to deployment. In this next video, you will learn how to build a continuous integration pipeline that automatically tests your changes before deploying your models.